Hello my dear friends, welcome back to another episode on Exotic Scents and I'm very excited for today's episode because we have something really really special today. I got a package a few months back from Japan and it was a very big surprise for me because one of my uh, friends in the fragrance community, Anna the blogger, uh, she has a beautiful perfume blog, a very talented nose. She helped me find these people. She was there at uh, Piti or um, I think uh, Ashans in Milan and she got a chance to experience perfumes from the brand Dyser. I have been floored by their creativity. I mean, where was I all these years? They are already registered on Fragrantica. They have perfumes from 2015, I think. And they also sell their perfumes through Lucky Scent. So they are available to the global audience. But their main language is Japanese. That is why these guys never come into limelight because there are problems with communication, etc., etc. And there's also a temper or an experience required to understand their creativity. So here I am bringing you one of the most exclusive perfume houses that you can dream about. The Japanese have a very specific philosophy of scent. Every culture has their own concept of uh, personal hygiene, body hygiene, smells, fragrances, foods and flavors. It's a very, very specific thing, guys. And the Japanese also have a way with things, but they are very organized. They are very mannered. All right. Their scent manners are very, very proper. In fact, most of the Japanese population avoids perfumes totally. That's a surprise because they have uh, this, this thing about hygiene and there's a lot of um, taboo, I think, attached with perfumes. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I've read that somewhere. Anyway, they have a brilliant write-up. So let me just give you a brief glimpse into the philosophy of the brand and also the philosophy of the Japanese perfume culture in a nutshell. So this paper has a short note about Kodo. So if you've been following me on my English channel, this is Exotic Sense, you would know what Kodo is. You may have heard that, at least the words Kiara, because you know I'm fond of agarwood. It's one of the most beautiful gifts from nature. And agarwood, uh, Kiara specifically in the agarwood realm is the most respected type of resonated wood, which is only found in the wild. It cannot be cultured, it cannot be created, and it's thousands probably hundreds and thousands of years old. Nobody has a proper thesis on its formation, so there's no consensus, but it's the rarest smell which has uh, spiritual capabilities. That's why the Japanese and the Chinese are obsessed with Kiara, Agarwood. Guys, when we think about Oud, the first thing which comes to our mind is the association with Middle East culture, but it's not true. See how surprising it is. When you explore scents, when you explore perfume cultures, you get to know these things and it is so amazing to learn about perfumery every day. And that is how I keep myself updated and I keep connecting with you because every day I'm looking at something special, something unique for you, for myself. These are user experiences. These are perfume experiences that you just can't replicate. Very, very special, unique and extensive and exclusive. So let me give you a brief idea about the incense culture of Japan. So here it goes. There are ancient traditions in Japan, such as Sado, which is the way of tea. There's Kado, the way of flowers. There's Kodo, the way of incense that I've already talked about. There's Kendo, Judo, Aikido that end with the word Do or way or path. So it is the process of doing. So Kodo is the way of incense. Uh, this word, the Do or way is a word of a highly spiritual nature with, which leads to mastery. All right. Established in the Kamakura period, Kodo prescribed the manners and style which have enhanced the art of fragrance up until modern time. So these guys are very specific with what they are doing. And also Japan is one country which consumes a lot of sandalwood as well. Most of the Mysore sandalwood from uh, a bygone era was going to Japan, apart from the European countries, of course. So they have descriptions of... Uh, Agarwood, there are basically six types of classifications depending on the smell of agarwood and all that. It's, it's a brilliant culture. You can watch videos on Kodo on YouTube. It's a very fascinating, brilliant culture and I would love you to go through it because you learn so much about the perfume cultures of the world. It just pulls you in with all that, uh, you know, interesting things that they have to offer. Now, there's a short message. I would love to read that as well. Over a long history dating back 1,400 years, the Japanese people have refined their perception of fragrances as ko. It is a state of mind in Japan, a way or do, a spiritual culture of the non-invisible. 
Brilliant, brilliant. Now this this is this is very very interesting. This is a very unique thing which I've heard. In this way, one listens to odors rather than smell them. So listening, I've already discussed about this phenomenon. When you are focusing, um, you know, a lot on the perfume that you're wearing, it's called listening. And most of these uh, unidimensional perfumes which you get in the conventional market will always miss, miss that spiritual element. However, natural perfumes, you know, they connect you to Mother Nature. I'm not trying to give you the hippie talk. I'm not trying to give you the, 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 the spiritual talk. This is reality. You've experienced that. When you listen to music, you feel that it's a gift from God. It's a gift from nature. Beautiful instruments, people singing. It just elates your mind. It does have, it can encourage you. It can discourage you. Movies can make us cry. Watching a drama can make us happy, can make us cry. So humans are very complicated. Our brain is very, very complicated. It needs to be connected with spirituality to maintain the balance in life, guys. That's, that's my uh, vision of life as well. Anyway, through listening to smells, one can connect with inner, one's inner self and reconnect honestly with human nature. Very, very similar to the Hindu philosophy of things. What the Japanese call Kodo is a way of life and a game intimately connected to their culture and everyday life. It is by combining this tradition with modern techniques that Dyser has created its line of perfumes. We hope these Japanese fragrances can soothe you and bring serenity to your daily life. I am very thankful, very thankful to Yasu. Yuki, thank you so very much for this wonderful letter. It really means so much to me because you guys are sharing these preci precious and more, most importantly, very expensive perfume materials. Thank you for trusting me with your work. And they have also provi provided me with a pamphlet. They're a pamphlet which basically describes their perfumes. They have two categories. One is floriental and the other is specific aromatic woods. So uh, you don't have to worry in case you love these brilliant, soft, floral scents from the house of creed etc etc they have a very nice sense of floral uh, scents floral perfumery but today we'll only be dealing with one of their perfumes which is their chiara perfume and uh, it is uh, like uh, the golden jewel you know among all these so the chiara perfume has agarwood rose frankincense hinoki which i'm not really sure um, about their cedarwood all right and uh, the chiara this is the extract which they've used in their perfume and they have sent it to me so that I can be, uh, you know, I can uh, really understand their perfume. So I've used Chiara in my life, one of the most expensive perfume materials and one of the most expensive fragrant materials, let's say. It's, it's more expensive than ambergris, it's more expensive than the most expensive oud and uh, one gram of it can cost you somewhere between 500 US dollars to 5000 US dollars. Yes, it's extremely expensive. If you've seen the documentary Scent of Heaven, uh, you must have seen Alan wearing a necklace and he has a pendant made from Chiara. He never leaves that pendant uh, you know, away from his body. He is so attached with it and he, it is so precious to him. So that is the level of involvement and obsession that people have for such materials. And uh, you also need to have calm mind and a lot of patience to understand these materials. You just can't wear these perfumes, buy these perfumes because these are really expensive. So this is the Chiara perfume. It costs about uh, 1300 US dollars for a 30 ml perfume extract concentration. Or I think somewhere around 1200 I'm sorry if I, I if I uh, I'm not sure about the price if I don't give you the correct figures you can go to lucky scent and see what this perfume costs so Chiara perfume it's a beautiful scent and the Chiara which they've sent me the extract it is very difficult to extract the scent of Chiara guys it is extremely difficult many people have tried and failed many people have tried to extract the scent of agarwood through alcohol solvent extraction and all that and everyone has failed but these guys have successfully nailed it. I congratulate them because it is one of the most beautiful scents on its own. But Chiara perfume is about many other things, as I said before. So what I get out of this, as soon as I open this, my reception is at its peak right now. So I can sniff a lot of materials. There are days when you cannot, cannot sniff a lot of materials and you must avoid those days, uh, you know, for these specific sort of scents. So it has a brilliant green herbaceous minty sort of quality. It's, it's not piercing as you would expect Chiara to be. It's a very gentle, subtle, mentholic sort of thing. 
there's a beautiful rose pineiness in here which is so so soothing it's 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 probably one of the most unique things that you've ever smelled in your life it's it's like the most expensive perfume from the west and the most expensive attar from india or uh, the middle east combined together there are so many things in here so many soft nuances if if you don't concentrate if you don't listen you'll miss out the whole thing and you'll just think oh it's just a simple minty concoction what's the hype all about so if you have that sort of temperament you'll find it really really difficult in my perfume journey i believe there are three levels to uh understanding of perfumes the first one is the beginners level where you are talking about you have an musk uh stuff like um uh, you know these generic perfumes from david off and uh, chanel etc etc now at level 2 you have the niche perfumes from the popular houses like tom ford private blend of course otherwise tom ford is a designer brand then you have amwash you have creed and all these beautiful niche making niche perfume making companies and then there's a level 3 to this which deals with attar and all these natural experiences which which is very which is uh, you know directed at a very uh, 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 you can say a hyper niche community an ultra niche community of you know of the perfume world so it will not appeal to everyone so this kyara thing is so beautiful elevating so just in case if you've reached level 3 this is one of the most sophisticated perfumes that you will have you will ever have in your arsenal right now i don't have the money for it i wish i could afford a bottle of it and i hope through my video many people who want to experience this will get an idea about this and will get to sample this at least please sample it don't go by my words or this explanation sometimes it can be very misleading i don't know what your understanding of perfumery is how you connect with your perfumes but this is a very different level of experience perfume experience the scent is very gentle i don't think you'll get a huge performance out of it and that's what uh, the whole thing is all about the japanese don't don't like to invade other people's spaces it's all about personal space you don't go out wearing this perfume to a party or an outdoor event it's it's more about your personal comfort or being with a sophisticated gentry it's a very beautiful enticing sensual sort of smell but at the same time it is very spiritually uh, you know uh, inclined it has the these um it has this smell which which will increase your focus it will help uh, calm your brain down you know it's a beautiful experience you must experience this it is one of those scents which you which will which will remind you of mother nature there's nothing harsh about it the alcohol used here is absolutely brilliant it does not have those uh, uh you know harsh synthetic chemical like vibe there's no abrasiveness to this uh, perfume as alcohol used here so they use supreme materials that one can think about it's a brilliant scent i get about 3 to 4 hours maximum with this but i i'm just using this little dabber that i hate by the way i need a proper sprayer to judge the perfume in its entirety so probably the people who have the sprayers there are many people who already have it uh, uh, they might get a better performance probably double than that so it's it's not really easy to comment on that however i can only tell you about the scent spectrum the rose is very specific this this spiciness this this lovely uh, dying accord of woodiness where you know the kyara sort of comes and becomes the central note it's it's a beautiful experience and words cannot be uh, you know used to describe it you have to experience it it's a tingling sort of sensation in your nose there's this green herbaceous a piercing sort of woody note sweet boozy and very very calming that's what this perfume is all about a very sophisticated perfume and i hope you enjoyed the review by the way guys this perfume is only available through lucky scent and uh, their website of course their own website so you can just google them up i'll put down the links below and um, i told you about the price now there's no concept of sex in here there's no concept of gender in here these are some very specific elements and according to your tastes and needs please try and sample this one some people will hate it and some people will absolutely fall in love with and probably require another bottle these are uh, some of the fine perfumes uh, which might give you a you know an idea or or probably uh, a point for reference ensar number 1 you know one of those perfumes which has that lovely a brilliant woody note that comes in the dry down this is the next perfume 
uh, that I'm going to review. Then you have something like Siberian musk, a very spiritual perfume, a very beautiful, glorious perfume. So these are some of the natural perfume references for you, just in case you are, uh, you don't have a reference for this. So I hope you enjoyed the review, guys, and we'll be back for more. We'll be talking about the Ensarod perfume and a lot, lot more. Until then, take care. Bye-bye.